Welcome to this um, webinar around uh, uh, around event-driven systems. And I was I was I was thinking, talking uh, a little bit about my thoughts of how to design events first, microservices and APIs. Really event-driven, but uh, but uh, you know with an emphasis on the on events. That's why it's called events first, microservices and APIs. <clears throat> My name is Jonas Bonier. I'm the CEO and uh, and and, and uh, founder of Lightbed. I created Akka. It's like a long time ago now, in 2009. Um, and you know, we're, the last product we we've been we've been pushing out. We've been working on the last four years. We pushed out last year is Calyx. Uh, but this is sort of a general talk. Um, that is that, that that is generally used for regardless if you use Calyx or not. But uh, I'm also going to you know lead in how how Calyx can fit into the picture and making things making things a lot easier at the end, so to speak. So I hope you stick around for that. Let's get started. So uh, I assume a lot of people at least want to do want to want to do microservices. You know, it's like in the and hopefully you're doing it for the right organization. Microservices are APIs, and hopefully you're doing it for the right reasons. You know that that. Um, a lot of focus, I think, personally, should be about scaling the organization. You know, there's a lot, there's a lot of benefits as we will. You know, most of this talk we're going to be on the tech, on the technical benefits. But I, I just want to have it said that scaling the organization is like one of the primary drivers for for my for microservices and having multiple independent and fully autonomous teams being being able to build and deploy uh, and uh, in the features without getting in in each other's way, sort of completely independent in, independently. Uh, and uh, the the problem though with microservices, if you're not uh, you know ready for it, is that it's, a, it's it's quite a big shift from the mo from the monolith. Uh, when you know when when we when we move to microservices, we enter the world of dis of dis distributed systems, and that's really the world of of non of non determinism. You know, in a in a way, we sort of we sort of when we exit the boundary of the service, you know, we enter this wild ocean. So to speak, uh, uh, of of, of non-determinism, <clears throat> and this is the world where, where where systems can fail in the most spectacular, you know, in intricate way when information can get lost and reordered and garbled, and, uh, and where you know failure failure detection, which is one of the better tools in distributed systems, is you know it's 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 more or less a guessing game, and this. This is a world that might sound terrifying uh, if you're not used to it, you know, uh, if, if, you're, if it's all new to you. But I have to say, you know, that is this is also the world that gives us solutions for a lot of the hard problems. You know, there are there are, you know, it sort of enables us to accomplish things that we can't do just working on in a, in a single machine, you know, on a single core or on a, on a single pod, etc. Uh, it, because it, it can give us solutions for resilience, you know, for elasticity, for true isolation, and a, and a lot and a lot of other things. So, uh, you know, I mean, too, too often in my in in my in my experience, uh, companies end up with with a, with an architecture something like this, you know, set of what I call microliths. You know, so you, sort of, you you sort of stumble and fall halfway towards. Towards microservices, uh, and 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 uh, and what I what I mean by microliths is that you have you, you have these method calls that are replaced by synchronous RPC calls, and you're still using CRUD, you know, in in a fully blocking way, and, and by 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 bringing you know blocking um, I/O and 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 uh, and uh, you know blocking database calls and all these things, you know, over. From from the monolith, where they where they usually work very very well, over to the world of, dis of distributed systems means that we have we have we, we you know we enter in like strong strong temporal coupling, and 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 this and this and, and this and this strong temporal coupling limits us in the way we can do scale scalability and availability and also extensibility and in my opinion, no experience also maintainability. You know, you, you sort of start piling up complexity as you as you as you go along instead of having it in a, on a, on a, you know, on the same level, uh, uh, you know, ac across the life cycle of an application. I think we can do better better than this. I know we can, and I th and and, th and thinking in events can help. You know, uh, domain driven design 
from an events first perspective. I really think that is that is sort of a gateway towards really good uh, you know system design and architecture. So let's talk about that. You know, what 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 does events uh, first domain driven design mean? And, and and let's try to sort of view the world through the lens of events. Okay. First, I just want to give sort of a world of warning. You know, domain driven design is is really a great tool, but it can it can it can easily lead us down to in the wrong in the wrong path. You know, Greg Young said a few a few a few a few years back. When you start modeling events, it forces you to think about the, the behavior of the system as opposed to thinking about the structure of the system. You know, the, the problem with domain objects and things we're, we're taught with DDD, but also in object-oriented programming, you know, and so is that is that it, it focuses you also, it, 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 you know, it forces you or it, led, it leads you to focus on structure too early in the, in the design process. Well, well, I think that we should we should look at the events, and we should not focus on the things. You know, this is what we've been taught in, in all the back in university when I, when, when I took my first C plus plus course and we got, got, got and sort of got introduced to object oriented programming. It was it was you know it was. It, it was taught that one should find the find the nuns, you know, because these nuns will become my 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 objects in the you know in the in in, in when it comes to domain driven design or my my domain objects. Instead, I think that we should focus on, at least first, you know, we shouldn't ignore the nuns and, and the things, of course, but we should focus first on what happens, you know, the verbs. We try the verbs, and and because the verbs would lead us to the events, while the nuns lead us to to our or more more rigid and stationary objects. Okay. But let, let's let's take a step back and and and, and look at what is really an, an, an event and what is sort of the nature of, of, of events. Events rep, rep, represents uh, sort of immutable facts of inf of information. And, uh, and and facts only accrue. I mean knowledge can only grow. You can't uh, sort of unlearn and, and for, sure you can't forget something but 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 in in you know on the conceptual level you can only accrue knowledge and and, and facts you know just accrue uh, it, it is however you know of course natural that certain facts can be regarded and ignored I mean you might not believe in something that's, that, that someone said we don't we don't we don't have to accept everything that's being that we're being told <clears throat> it's also very important that that if events or facts can't be retracted once they are accepted, you know, then they're well. If if you accept a, a fact, then 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 they're part of your of, of your sort of knowledge, sort of pool of knowledge, so to speak. And also, if events and facts they are they represent something that has already happened, so they can't be deleted once once accepted. But of course, they might have to be deleted for you know for legal reasons, you know, thinking G GDPR or more morally reasons and so on. But what is really important, you know, in the way when I say that that, that facts only accrue, I mean, is 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 of course natural that new facts arriving can invalidate old facts or existing facts because we you know we learn and we might change opinion based on new information. So so we should ask ourselves, you know, what are the facts? Mind the facts like a detective. And one really good tool for that is event is event storming. You know, event storming is sort of a very, very practical, hands-on technique when you we're bringing all the stakeholders, domain experts, and programmers into one single room, and you brainstorm using post-it notes. You know, um, you know, and the and the uh, with the purpose then of trying to find the domain language and how we can talk and communicate across these different groups, you know, stakeholders and and, and programmers and so on. But do that through events. And we do that by, by trying to understand how data flows and you know, who's talking to who and, and understanding causality. I mean, what is what is leading to what, how facts are causally related and so on. And, and, the, and, the, and the whole idea here is that to really understand how the system functions, how it works in real time, not just like a map of, of stationary objects uh, that might communicate, you know, that sort of modeling the, the objects and the nuns that I talked about. So we should really try to understand two things. First, the intents. The, with the, when, when, when we talk about intents, we mean looking for things like 
so these are hints for intents, you know, communication, conversations, expectations, contracts between parties, you know, transfer of control from one party to, to another. And we should also look for, 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 for the facts. And, and when it comes to the facts, you know, hints for good facts for state, history, causality, notifications, transfer of state instead of transfer of control. And, you know, the intents usually becomes our commands, while, our, while the facts becomes our events. So th this is something that I think it can be can be helpful to, to, to think about. So let's try to understand how commands and events, you know, work a little bit better here. So, so commands, you know, they, they are the object form of a method or an action or of a request. Okay, they're always stated in the imperative, you know, the create order or ship product, like do something. While, you know, while then we have reactions. Reactions, you know, they represent the side effect, the result of that uh, command, you know, create the order, okay, an order might be created, that, 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 that's sort of causing a, a, side, a side effect. But once you have done the job of, 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 of of sort of uh, um, executing that order, for example, or create, create or created that order. Then you create a fact representing, you know, the fact that something was done. Some so so, so an event is really a fact that some representing something that has already happened. So they so so events should be always phrased in past tense, like order created, instead of create order order created something that already happened or product shipped and so on. Make sense. Everyone's nodding. <laughs> I hope at least. Uh, but let, let's dig a little bit deeper here. So uh, and, and look at the difference between commands and events. You know, commands are really all about intent. The, they are directed from one party to another, from A to B. You know, they have usually a single addressable destination. Okay, they they tend to model personal communication very very well, and they do have a distributed focus, okay, because they move across address spaces from one component to another, from one system to another, from, from you know, into a message broker and then off to somewhere else, whatever it is. And they, and they tend to really uh, sort of model very well command and control. Events are very different, you know, there are intent, you know, or, or intentless. There are usually, you know, or, or, or true events should be emitted completely anonymously. They just happen, you know, for, for anyone that's interested to observe. Can be zero, can be 10, can be 100. You know, the one emitting the event doesn't care. He emits the event and whoever's interested in listening to that can do, can do so as, you know, as, as much as he or he, he like, she, she like. Uh, um, events model broadcast, you know, sort of speaker's corner, or you know, me talking to you here. I'm, uh, I have no idea how many are listening if, or if I'm making any sense, but I'm making my statements and hopefully state facts regardless. You know, events have sort of a local focus instead of a distributed focus. I only emit events locally, they might be relayed in distributed fashion using some other mechanisms but 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 you know con 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 conceptually you you should think about them as happening locally while well, commands usually only make sense if i you know in a distributed setting i'm telling someone else to do something so events really model autonomy versus commands uh, model command and control and autonomy is good right so events really lead us on a really good path here but but uh, so I, th I think that we should you know work with the events and let the events define you know the bounded context you know and define the the sort of the, the protocols that, that that define that you know the the promises that we make to an I or, or or a component make to an outside world and 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 defines also what happens if we can't keep those 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 promises and in a way sort of this sort of inverts the uh, the control here it's actually it puts the service in 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 control. And, and, he, and in charge of his own destiny. So the question is then, how can we do, how, how can we do that? What are the, the characteristics of an event-driven uh, service? First, you know, event-driven services, they receive and react or choose not to react. It's okay to disregard, you know, of, of facts, but, but event-driven services receive and react to facts that is coming his way. They publish new facts, 
ideally, I'd say, um, you know, it's not religious here. You know, sometimes it might make sense to to, to publish facts in a synchronous fashion, but I think ideally, they, they should be, be be published asynchronously. You know, without any expectation that anyone will ever ever do anything or even even listen. You know, but it, it just publish new facts as they as they are created to the, for, for the rest of the world to 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 to, to listen. And this really has said inverse the the, the control flow. And in and and as is as such, you know, minimizing the coupling between components and increasing the autonomy, all good things. You know, a lot of people are asking me, what about mutable state? You know, then then, then if everything should be immutable and immutable, you know, has a reputation being hard to work with and so on. Uh, I you know, I'd, I'd say mutable state is just is just fine. The important thing is how you work with it. I think it's fine, but it needs to be contained. And it needs to be non-observable to the rest of the world, because if other, if the rest of the world sort of depend on mutable state, then they will depend on things that change. You know, can change at any point, right under the fingers, while 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 another other component is using it or observing it. You know, that 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 that, that calls for a very very you know, brittle uh, uh, design. So, 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 what you want to do, you know, is you want to contain it in sort of a safe haven, and only use mutable state for local computations, okay? But when you're done with your processing and you're ready to tell the world about your results, then you then you can use those immutable values and publish them as facts and so communicate. I did this, you know, this is my result, and I published that to to the outside world. You know, this means that others can then rely their reasoning and, and their actions based on stable information instead of something that, that, that might just change at any point in time. Uh, so let's take a look at a little, a little example here. Let's say we have we have we have a user. It's, it's, it sends a, a command to this uh, the, this queue, this mailbox, or, or, or you know, in in this in this service, and and some sort of side effect. Is, ha is happening now. Uh, you know, that generates an event. It, it's, it, it's sent to some sort of event stream where other services then can, can, uh, can, pick, can, pick, can pick that up and choose to act on these, on these uh, events or, or on this event, you know, single event that, ha that now happened. The interesting thing here now, you know, that this also is a really, really good, it's not just, you know, gives you really, a really loosely coupled architecture. Uh, uh, and 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 all the benefits for scalability and and and, and resilience and all these things. It also give, makes it very easy to integrate, you know, with with uh, external systems and integrate with databases and other 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 data storages. You know, because of course you you can replace one of these services or add, you know, instead of course replace, but you can add databases and then you can add like uh, sort of ex, ex, external systems. Uh, that, that you know we can they can all just subscribe to this event that happened and and sort of built up their knowledge uh, base of, of, of what's going on in the system. Uh, it's, 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 it's very important to understand that for this to work very well, you know, in terms of the of the of the constraints of distributed systems, you know, I really think that you know you need to dive into eventual consistency here, which might be a little bit scary, but it's it's okay. You know, it, it, it's um, it's not as hard as it looks and there are great patterns and tools that, that, that will help you work with that. Uh, because, you know, if, if, uh, if, if you do that, you know, th this pattern is really, really good for also managing failure. Let's say that, 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 that one of the services crashes here then uh, and, and loses all this state, you know, then you can just resubscribe uh, uh, to, to this uh, event stream and sort of pull everything that it missed, or perhaps even like pull everything from if it wasn't like durable on disk, you know, you can pull everything from 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 uh, from uh, uh, the start of the of the system, you know. If if you, but then, but then you need to rely on things like event source that I will talk about in a second. But but it can it, it, it can just continue, you know. Sort of pulling events from 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 where it left off when it when it crashed, so 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 it, it makes it very very easy to to deal with things like you know partial failures and having having a sort of rigid and very structured way of recovering from failure based on based on events. Uh, do you remember 
uh, sort of you know this picture where it has this, this wild ocean of non of non determinism. I really think that events can help us sort of craft this sort of autonomous islands or safe islands of of, of determinism and, and sort of strong consistency, uh, um, sort of sort of sort of sort of safe havens in this whole wild ocean of non determinism. You know in which we can sort of live happily under the illusion that you know time is absolute that there is a single now you know and 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 that and that the world is 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 d deterministic because in within each one of these little islands you know we can sort of pretend that the world is 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 deterministic it's single threaded it's you know we you, you get you, you pick a one command after another or one event by from another and you and you and you can execute in if things in in a linear fashion the in, the interesting thing is that then you know things can sort of crash and burn around you but 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 you you don't lose your sanity in this little small safe island you know of determinism so to speak so, so uh, to model this, I think we, you know, we need to go back to domain-driven design, and 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 a really good tool here is the entity. You know, the entity is really is really our our our, our sort of unit of 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 uh, integrity, of consistency, of our unit of failure. And because it's you know, if it, and also our unit of determinism. You know, an entity is always atomic. If it sort of it it fails as a whole, it moves around as a whole, is is sort of brought back to life and recovering from failure as a whole. And an entity means that you know that if if you if you build it, you know, using event driven design, it is fully autonomous. And 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 uh, and the question is then, how do you then coordinate state between all of these little islands, all of these sort of entities? How can we ensure consistency and consensus across these these islands? Because it it, it doesn't help much if we you know, if we if we have full control in each one of these boxes, but the, but there's no way of making them you know work together. Because I mean, all systems are, are comprised of many different parts, of course, and and they're all as important. So how how so how can we put together systems of these little islands then? Yeah. Patel and this that is that is you know one of my heroes. Uh, I've learned so much from him. You know he talks a lot about you know de de defining sort of clear boundaries between certainty and uncertainty, and 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 he has this nice framework. You know I, I pulled from one of his papers where he talked about first inside data that is our local present or sorry, that that is our current present. You know that's inside this little island inside the box. That's our local state. Okay, then we have outside data that is like outside our little bubble here. He calls that blast from the past. That's our events and our facts that are flowing between these islands. And then between the services, we have what, what he calls almost, uh, you know, poetically, hope for the future. That's our commands, you know, how you can dictate someone to do something or, or, or order someone to do something. So I think this is a really good framework how to think about um, how about the world that at least help help me a lot. Uh, you know, em, is there, em, em, embarking on a on a journey like this, if you if you if if you model your world using events and and you emit them into an event stream that others can sub, can subscribe to, then then you can use that event stream as a communication fabric between components or services. You can use it as an in, as integration fabric, as I, as I showed you earlier. You can use it as a replication fabric. You know, I mean, I mean, sort of having sort of active passive replication where you always have have a passive hot standby because you, that, that that's just you know, consuming the events. And and in and in the case of failure, it, it's you know it can just flip. You can just flip over there, and and it's everything is 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 ready. It like it doesn't cost you much at all. Almost anything to have to to build the, you know really solve the replication into the model here. And you can also use the event stream as a persistence fab fabric, and that is something I'd like to dive in a little bit deeper on here and talk about event-based persistence. You know, the the problem with CRUD, you know, there's a CRUD is great, of course, and it works beautifully in the you know in the in the sort of safe haven, you know, say of of the monolith where you can we can where you can assume a lot of more things than you can do in 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 a distributed system. Uh, so, so I'd say you know, you know, in the first like microservices in in the microservice architecture, you know, each microservice should really own its own data. 
And, and I think CRUD, as I said, is totally fine for isolated data. But the but you know the problem is that 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 the consistency across CRUD services is really is 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 really really hard, and uh, you know it's really hard to do joins. You know you usually end up with ad hoc or very weak guarantees. And 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 you know Pat Hell and he in his in his great uh, paper standing on the shoulders of giants. He you know he he said that two phase commit essentially transactions you know across across you know contexts is the anti availability protocol you know it, it leads to poor availability you know two phase commit introduces a sort of temporal coupling and there's really no way no good way i'd say to deal with with with, with partial failures which is quite common in a distributed system you end up with poor scalability you know we're usually very high contention blocking uh, wait time and a really bad performance, you know, because you're usually bottlenecking on those on those queues. So, and 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 most of these transaction algorithms, you know, have some so have some some moments of stopping the world to ensure strong consistency. So, I really think that strong consistency is the wrong default in distributed systems. It's nothing wrong with strong consistency when it when it fits is 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 beautiful. It makes our lives a lot as developers, of course, a lot easier. But I don't think we should opt in on strong consistency as the default, as the first thing we do. Why? Because it's really hard to make available. Uh, and it's and you know, and the question, okay, how does it map to the real world? Yeah, when you look at it and think about it, it's actually not how the real how the real world works at all. We never have strong consistency in the real in the real in the real world. And and uh, you know it's, the real world is all bent on, on sort of events flowing causality you know one thing leading to the next uh, you know springing back from failure and so on fully asynchronous fully autonomous and so on uh, and we get by in the real world just fine right so 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 it's not so scary to dive into that world when it comes to building systems as well I think. Because if we do, you know, if we if we use strong consistency as 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 the as the as the default, uh, and 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 you know, it, I think it just makes things work worse. Uh, so the question in that is then, what can we do? We have to rely on on eventual consistency, and and you know, I don't think as I said, it's as, it's it's as scary um, as as a lot of people say. It's it's actually you know, I I just encourage you to relax. And just think about how can I best model the real world, you know, because usually that's what we do as as, as programmers. We we try to model you know some sort of business business cases or business rules and and you know operate you know model some 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 real world scenarios. And and when you really think about it, it's usually all based on eventual consistency in the end. And uh, and 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 so start with that. Start with try to model it using using eventual consistency. And when you see an opportunity. For strong consistency, feel free to use it. You know, it's great stuff. Uh, but 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 uh, you need to be, be be sure that that the price for using it is not too high. That's effectively. You know, the main problem with CRUD is is update in place. And and Jim Gray, another one of my heroes. Uh, you know, he, uh, he you know he's one of the the ones doing most groundbreaking work on transactions and and, and transaction processing. You know, he said in 1981 that update in place strikes the system designers as a cardinal sin. It violates traditional accounting practices that have been observed for hundreds of years. Yeah, you know, you should, you should let that sink in. And again, you know, we should learn from the real world. Okay, if, if update in place is so bad, I mean, how how do we how do other other you know you know so fields or or or, or you know industries doing it? Uh, you know, I, I think we should just go back and look and, and relearn basic accounting pr principles. You know, and 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 as doing so, you know, we might have a lot of unlearning to do because we've been spoiled by computer science in this in the, in the world of one machine, one core, one thread, or whatever it is. You know, for too for for too long. So, I really think that we should we should we should learn to rely on, on proven practices for bookkeeping. You know, they that you know that's really technology that are centuries old uh, and has proven to be a really good way of making sense of data. And, and the main con sort of concept here is 
is is event logging. Uh, uh, you know, if if we translate that to our to our our to our world, world here, and event logging means that you store each event in the order they arrive, durable on disk, just like transactions in the ledger. You know, like you can see on this picture here. And and if we if we do so, you know, I think that event logging can really be the bedrock in our system that we can build. You know that we can use to build consistency, or you know, availability, tra scalability, traceability. You know, that it can really be our, our source of truth in the in each system. And you know, Pat Helen again, you know, he he said in this really great paper, immutability changes everything. That the truth is the log. The database is a cache of a subset of the log. You know, there's, there used to be a, a reason to use update in place. You know, disk space used to be quite expensive, but today is 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 really really cheap. So there's really no reason why we why we can't store all events that ever happened in the system, meaning all history forever. And, and the question is then, why should we work with a cache of a subset of the real thing? Why not work with the real thing directly? That is the event log. So and that leads me to event sourcing. You know, that's a great pattern, sits right on top of the event log. And I think that can be a cure for this cardinal sin, you know, updating place. And, and event sourcing is really is, 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 is really easy. You know, it's just that you log every state changing event to a component in the order as they as, as they are created. And 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 you know, and we use that sort to sort of back up the entities. So we can have strong consistency, as I talked about, within each entity. You know, we have this this safe world, safe haven, this this island of of of, of determinism. So with, with which we, within we can have strong consistency, but then we have eventual consistency between the entities or the services. You know, and if you if if you, if you work like this, then you. Then you can have sort of then you have a way to replay that log, because all the history that ever happened to a service and the whole system. But if we look at a specific service, you know, all, everything that ever happened to that service since you booted it up is stored in the order it happened. You know, so so this means that we can replay that log to bring the component back into 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 good shape after failure. We we can we can replay it to do replication. If we want to replicate something to, to, to some other place, then we we will get an identical replica because it's based on the same history we have really rock solid audit without doing anything really it's already we're there right in the event log we can just look at it you know so there's there's a lot of things we get for 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 free here that actually are quite hard to build in a distributed system or in a cloud cloud-based system okay so let's look at an example here it, in event source service here, we have, we have some some user. It's it sends a command. It ends up in the component, you know, and some side effect is triggered. Okay, we already talked about this. Out of that side effect, I create an event representing what what just happened, and I'm storing that in the event log, in the order as I'm doing that as a service. Okay, this is the happy path. Everything goes 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 well. I can I can push it out to the event bus. So to speak, the event stream and others can consume that event at their own, uh, uh, you know, pace. Now, now let's look at what happens if we enter the sad path. So when we have to, when, when things fail and we have to recover from fail, from failure, it's very very easy. We have we have we have the event log. The only thing we need to do we is that we bring we, we sort of rehydrate the events. We bring the uh, the component back into into state. And that's it, you know. Then, then it can then it can continue to serve uh, new commands, and triggering new events uh, that we then emit out. So, uh, event sourcing really gives us a single source of truth, you know, with all history that that's ever happened. You know, it allows for this for this pattern. You know, I encourage you to Google it. Memory, memory image. Martin Fowler talks about that. Where you where you where you sort of have a way to have durable in memory state. It sort of inverts the database in a way. So your source of truth, you know, becomes what you have in memory instead of what you have in memory is usually just a cache, and the source of truth is in the is in the database. 
You know, this this sort of really event sourcing allows you to really invert that. So your source of truth, you know, meaning the state that you can rely on being always correct is in memory. And you have sort of a backup down on disk. And, and, and just think yourself what, what, what that opens up for when it comes to you know, per, 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 like per performance, for example. And, and uh, you know, if, if your data is always available in the memory and it's always correct, you know, you, you never have to go down to the, to the database to fetch it and causing all kinds of contention and you're relying on a you know, single point of bottleneck and single point of failure and, 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 and so on. Of course, you need that for the event-based system, but that can have, but these things can be completely uh, uh, de decoupled, sorry. I got some notification from, from Zoom. Are we still running? I hope so. Uh, Okay, uh, another thing that it avoids is this, you know, infamous, you know, object relational mismatch in, in which, you you know, if you have a component model or some object oriented model, you always have to match that to tables in the data, in the, in the database. You know, that's why we, we got tools like, like, Hi like Hi Hibernate and, 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 and so on. It's, uh, it, it's quite a hassle, both to map that correctly and efficiently, but also maintain it. You know, event sourcing, you, you you don't have to think about that. You can you you can work with your with your domain model, you know, in the component in memory, you know, completely, you know, ob, you know, oblivious, so to say, of how it's being stored. Because because it's all just events in the event log. There's really no mapping at all happening, which means that, that you that you can you can just have the ultimate way of working with state as you would as you would like. Okay, which is really beautiful. And it, it also allows others to subscribe to state changes, as I talked about. Uh, in a, and, and, and as a really good side effect, it, it has really good mechanical sympathy. Mechanical sympathy is, is, is a term that you know, Martin Thompson often uses. And it, and it, and it, it means that it, it lends itself very well to modern hardware. You know, and, and in, this, in, this, in this particular case, you, know, you have the you get sort of the single writer principle for for free where you, we can just have one thread just writing very very fast uh, you know to disk in order just appending 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 which means that you can move very very fast so that's all good but what about queries then you know i so we use the event log for storing the events that is our source of truth queries is harder you know an event log is hard to query you know that's that that that's one of the downsides. Here, seek seek can can really help. You know because that's why you often see event sourcing used together with seek with CQRS. CQRS mean, means command query responsibility segregation or separation. And and you know the interesting here is that is that CQRS allows you to separate the write from the read model. You know, they usually have very different characteristics in terms of consistency, availability, you know, scalability. And, 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 and by separating the read and the write mode from each other, it allows you both sides to be stored in the optimal format. On the right side, I already talked about, you know, the, the, all, the, all the good things you get with, with storing the right side in an, in, in an event log. The read side, you have many options. You might want to store it in a relational database, in a NoSQL database, in a graph database. You might want to push it into into Spark or Flink or something like that. So it really gives you a model for, for polyglot persistence because you might want to mix these. You might want to push it into, into SQL database and a graph database for different ways of looking at the data, for example. If all this is abstract, let me try to illustrate this here. So let's say you have a user. It sends a, a command to this, to, the, to this service. This service now serves the right side model here, where we write to the event log. Okay, once we've done that, we sort of emit it to our event stream or our, 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 our event bus here now, the read side model can pick that up and read from the data store or, or, or actually, you know, the data store picks it up and stores it that can serve the, the, the read model. That, 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 that's a more accurate way of, of talking about it. And this, and, the, and this data store, as I said, can be any type of database, you know, it can be Hadoop or if you, if you like that or whatever. And 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 then you and, and then you, you 
and then you can serve those that that you know the, the queries from the read side completely independently of the write side and and this gives us a lot of a lot of good uh, uh, things you know it gives us increased resilience you have you, you have you have temporal decoupling of writes and side effects and 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 you know and you know, and, and you know one good thing is the service doing the write and the service per, per, performing the side effect they don't need to be available at the same time it also helps you with increased scalability where you have like scale and you can scale the reads and writes completely independently of each other for example you have you might have a write mostly uh, system or, uh, you know, ver 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 versus another situation where we might have a read mostly system. So it gives you sort of more knobs to turn and to tweak, and, and not not having sort of one getting each other, uh, uh, getting in each other's way. You know, sort of with a, always ending up with with the smallest common denom denominator. Uh, it also allows you to have multiple event subscribers. As I said, you can have multiple views of the data. You know how the other systems pick, picking it up at the services, other database, and this and, and sort of true polyglot persistence as well. Uh, you know, one one important aspect here though is is is, is that in you know to get most of the benefits of resilience and scalability, you, you should rely on eventual consistency. Uh, in in practice, it usually in in my experience, it usually is not a problem. But there might be sometimes, you know, if, if there is a delay in the event propagation, it might be that you sort of don't read your writes in a way. You know, you send a command and 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 then uh, update it, and when you and when you read the query, you know, it's still not there, so to speak. There is a solution for that, though, and that is that you can use a single database for for to to serve both your reads and and your and, and your writes, and then rely on on the database, you know. Uh, you know, functionality for strong consistency and transactions. And and uh, if we should try to illustrate this, this here, you, know, you, you might replace it with a single database here where you can write to the event log in the database and, 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 and in the same transaction up to update sort of the read side, the query side in the same database. So you can serve both the read side and the write side, uh, uh, you know, using the same... Um, database you know this if you if you have I'm, I'm only bringing this up it's not something that i will i will recommend you start with but but if, if there are use cases that absolutely demand strong consistency you can still use that in a in a in a in a, in a cqrs event sourcing type of type of, of setup the question is then you know you know all this sounds great and 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 uh, i hope at least i think it's great uh, but then, the, you know, some of my, some of you might wondering, you know, okay, how do I go about and implement this for real in the cloud or on prem? But let's let's look at the cloud here now. You know, the problem with 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 cloud native is that we are, you know, it's, it's not that all of these things that I just talked about might be hard, but we are, you know, in terms of infrastructure, we are drowning in complexity. You know, Kelsey Hightower posted this is sort of amusing tweet a few a few months a couple of months back where he said where he says you know rolling your own rolling your own platform has never been easier all you all you got to do is pick 200 items from this list and you're and, and you're good to go you know and this this image is taken directly from the from the cncf website you know it's it's it can be it, it can be overwhelming it's, there's so many products all good you know not all good but many most of them i think are really really good and and but but how do you choose which ones per, fit your use cases and 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 how do you stitch it all together into in into a single you know coherent working system how do you maintain guarantees across all of this all 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 of these products how you, how can you ensure to your to your customers and users that you can maintain the SLAs that you that you that you um, have 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 promised you know things usually fail between uh, so you know in at the boundaries you know and and where you need to do handoff between different subsystems and if you if you have to stitch it together a bunch of subsystems yourself you know then you're you better know what you're doing so i all that all that is very hard i think we need to continue to climb the ladder of abstraction you know we've been doing that as an industry over and over and over again you know we started with you know with punch cards you know and then you know and then we got you know assembly and c and and then the more modern languages and you know when it comes to 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 uh, to hardware you know we you know or, or you know 
or sitting right on top of hardware, we get you know, virtualization, you know, uh, Linux containers, you know, let it, the Kubernetes and, and Docker and whole the, and this whole ecosystem. You know, we're we're, con we're constantly trying to do to climb this ladder of abstraction and and to do more with less. And and I think it's about time that we do that again. Uh, um, yet another time. I don't. I don't think you know Kubernetes and 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 stitching together your own stack over and over and over again is really is really necessary. You know, some some might like it, and some might feel the ne the necessity to do so, but most I think not. So so I I think the re the really important thing is then is then what is that? I think we really really need to provide more higher level developer experience and APIs for developers to building these new class of cloud of cloud native applications and. And and all in you know, leading to liberate the developers to focus on the essence, you know, and that is that is you know building business logic, building, contributing directly to business value. But that's hard, you know, in order without sacrificing things like development speed, you know, cost can't go across the roof, especially nowadays. You you don't want to you do you don't want to sacrifice predictability or maintain ability. I think you know the a, a, a good a good starting point is to sort of distill the essence, or sort, of, sort of coming from a different angle, sort of, you know, so sort of distill the essence of what a developer actually needs to focus on. What is the bare minimum that each developer needs to do to contribute business value every day and nothing else? Uh, you know, I think it's sort of essentially three things: defining the API. I mean, how do you communicate with the with the with the, with the outside world? And how do you communicate between uh, so the contracts between the different services? Uh, second, define your domain model. You know, you know working with these events first, uh, domain-driven design, if you like, or 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 something else. But but come up with a model for my how do how do I model my business case? How do I model my domain here uh, in in terms of object state, you know, flows, uh, streams, and so on. And 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 lastly, you know the how do I, what do I do when I, you know, react on, on requests from, from my users? And what is, what, what drives sort of this whole domain model is the business logic, you know? So you have the API, the domain model and the, and the business logic. I really think that the rest, the rest can be eliminated and should be eliminated. You know, you know, there's, there's, uh, I, I think, it, you know, the rest can be generated from the code. And and there is sort of a new class of, of of developer passes that really tries to address this. And and you know and and one of them is Calix. You know, Calix is a is a, is is a platform as a service, sort of a true true developer pass that enables organization to build and deploy cloud native, event driven, and fully distributed microservices you know, rapidly with no operations required. What does that mean? Yeah, it make, means that Calix makes it very easy to 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 build a complete. Cloud native stack, you know, and improve developer product immensely, you know, and 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 it does that by providing sort of an out of the box cloud native stack, all powered by a really really high velocity developer experience. Where, you know, where where you do the work writing the code, and then you ship ship that up to to the Calix pass. And then your 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 then your job is done. There's really no operations required whatsoever. All that is on us. You know, we have we have a 24 seven SRE team that 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 that, that making that's that's making sure that everything just just const, continue, like constantly runs is upgraded to the latest versions. You know, making sure that 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 you know that 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 everything runs runs smoothly. And and and. And for you as, as a developer, you know, Calix gives you really you know, best in class, top class, high performance and scale and scalability. You know, we 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 can, you know, in the in the in the latest benchmark we ran, we 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 were serving reads at about six millisecond uh, and and writes at about eight millisecond, you know, round trip all the way from me from, from getting the request from from the from from the you know from the ingress router all the way down to the database and all the way up again. Which which should really be enough for most uh, use cases. So so a way to try to understand what Calix does for you is like I, I want you to try to envision uh, your application as sort of a cube. That's your cloud native stack. Okay, 
At the bottom, we have like cloud infrastructure, like AWS, Google Cloud, Azure. Then the, the, the second layer, you know, is Kubernetes, you know, running on EKS, OpenShift, you know, Rancher, and whatever your, your, your poison is there. Then we have the database layer. You know, there might be one database that, that you choose or multiple, you know, depending on the use cases. Most, most non-trivial use cases are polyglot persistence today, in, in, my, in my experience. It might be Cassandra, you know, Amazon, DynamoDB, Spanner, or Cosmos, or Yugabyte, whatever. Then you need a, a layer of, of security and compliance, you know, zero trust, multi-factor multi authentication, encryption, you know, usually things like JWT support, client side certifications and compliance, like things like SOC 2 and, and so on, uh, GDPR, of course, and, and all of those things. Quite tricky stuff to get to get right. Once you get that done right, you know, all these first four layers, then you can start, you know, building, pulling together the, the, the infrastructure. That's more of the, the fun work for a developer uh, to, to some extent, because it can often be over, overwhelming, of course. Uh, but here we have things like service meshes, API gateways, message brokers, you know, NAT gateways, and so on. Finally, when you're done with all of that, you know, then you can start building the app. Uh, and but but the problem is that when then when things are moving you know underneath you know sort of shakes the whole cube you need to go dive down there and start fixing things you know replacing uh, you know infrastructure you know doing updates and 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 and, and whatever it, it it might be so so effectively you know this is your cloud native stack you need to deal with all of these things in order to to build a, a full a complete cloud native application so where does Calix comes in yeah Calix really allows you to focus only on the top level. You know, we the only thing you need to do in Calix is to focus on writing the code, declaratively con 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 configure that code. And, and the rest is, is on us. The rest is on Calix, really. I mean, everything around integration, security compliance, database, I mean, Kubernetes management, cloud infrastructure, et cetera, all that is on us. So it really eliminates, you know, it's effectively all complexity uh, so bring build, 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 building a cloud native application. So what are the components? I don't have too much time to to dive into you know what Calix is, but I just want to give you a glimpse since I probably that's probably most developers here. Uh, so what are the Calix components that you that you can work with? The first we have, you, you, you have, we we have the entity that I that I talked a lot about here. That is sort of a stateful function allows you for like multiple durable storage models. Uh, you, you can choose the right sort of shape of your data. It might be key value, it might event sourcing might might be what, what works well that I, that, that I talked about, or it might be in a replicated state uh, using CRDTs. You know, key value is 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 more more is more like like CRUD. Uh, and, and and you know, working with this entity is a really, really high level uh, abstraction that that removes all the complexities around data distribution, things like caching, concurrency, distributed locking, transactions, and all of those things. You know, it's sort of it's, it's usually most often paired up with an what we call an action. An action is a stateless function. And and, and uh, you, you can use that for many different types of patterns, like handle entity changes, subscribe to message brokers, uh, building sort of the the API controller pattern and so on. Then you have a, a very interesting concept called called views. You know, they are really this is, they're truly materialized views and allows you know streaming views in real time, uh, all the way out to the client using HTTP or gRPC, and 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 it gives you a really good model for modeling CQRS that I talked about. That you have the entity and then you have the view. You have the write and the read side. Uh, then you have then you have timers. You know they're usually uh, they're small but uh, powerful. If you need them, you need them. And and, and the latest uh, addition to to the Kalis components is something we shipped about a month ago. Now that is that is high level workflows, making it possible to do this. You know this coordination and orchestration across these sort of safe islands that I talked about. You know the entities. Uh, sort of building sort of the distributed transactions and and by implementing the saga pattern. Now, if you don't know that, I encourage you to to Google that. It's 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 a really good pattern to have under your belt. But workflows implements that. So 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 and with workflows, you, you can declaratively just define every all the steps in the workflow, and and have a structured way of doing 
you, you, you're doing compensating actions and going to the next step and, and, and what happens if, if, if there's unavailability or failure and so on. So it effectively gives you a structured state machine, how to work with, with, with long running uh, transactions. So, so I just want to give you quickly a little glimpse in, 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 in what, in what Kaylee can, can look at. So on the, on, the, on, the, on the left hand side here, you have the developer's responsibility, meaning your responsibility. On the right hand side, you know, you have, you have Kaylee's responsibility. So, so uh, let's start by writing a very simple stateful microservice. And that's our in this in this in this case, I'm I'm, I'm picking the event source uh, persistence model just because we talked a lot about it. And 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 uh, as as you can see here, we we create an aggregation entity. You know, I don't have time to go through the actual use case here, but but it looks more or less the same regardless of what you're doing. I'm inheriting event source entity. This is in Java, by the way, and and. Uh, and and the in, the interesting thing here is this ag is the lowest aggregate function. It it takes a request, meaning the command here, and and it you know it 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 com it does its logic. I've sort of omitted that code here. But when it's done, it sort of creates an event, this add for aggregation event. It emits the event to the rest of the world to 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 see and to be stored in in an event source fashion, and then it replies uh, with an acknowledgement acknowledgement saying okay. You know that's the code. Now you can see that you think these annotations here. We are declaratively con 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 configuring. You know, uh, first, you know what type of entity type it should be. Uh, you know how it should be mapped in terms of, of the entity key. But but even more importantly, here we here we're able to 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 define the our, our API using this re request mapping, and then post mapping on the actual ag aggregate function here. So you that that means that Calix will then generate sort of an API endpoint out of this. Using, I mean, enable it where, where you can choose to enable it through HTTP or gRPC or both. Uh, so that is the entity side. Now, if you, let's say that 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 we we want to do we want to implement CQRS here and do and do and and do a, a query a representation as well, so a read a read side rep representation. It's it's no more code than this actually. Where you where we here create with this API query view uh, where we extend view. This are our, our, our materialized view. We, we, we set the request mapping here to be slash API query, which means that, that clients then can through our HTTP endpoints and just get a streamed, uh, uh, sort of get, get, get in a sort of a stream with constant updates based on all what's, on what's going on uh, in this in, in this particular view. And, and uh, you can see here that, you know, we have this method get aggregation key. We annotate that with query and here we're a, we're able to put in sort of a SQL query. It's actually not a true SQL. It's actually querying the entity. You know, it's querying your object model. So sort of, sort of an object query, query, query model here that you can, where you can just, so you don't, you, you don't end up in having to map your object, sort of your, your, your domain model down to, to the, to the underlying database. The underlying database is really nowhere to be seen. You always work on, on the highest level possible, meaning your own, uh, your own domain domain model, but 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 from this simple query annotation here, where we define our query, we're able to create a fully uh, fully streaming real time materialized view, you know, for for other services to use, but also for 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 uh, uh, for your clients to use. So that's the, that that so that's your responsibility. Write this code, declaratively annotate it how you want it to operate, and out of this, you know, Calix can then infer everything else. So, so, so we have sort of infrastructure inferred from code. And, 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 and this is just a, sort of a, a, a simplistic uh, uh, architectural diagram of everything that Calix does for you. And it's of course more, but, but, but you know, in essence, you know, what you can see here, you know, it, 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 it generates a complete reactive event-driven platform stack, cloud native stack with ingress routers, you know, service mesh security with secrets, ACL, you know, JWT cert. You have, you have a fully ACA based sidecar cluster, you know, that's using, you know, gossip protocols to do, to, to ensure availability at the highest level. And, 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 you know, each one of these functions is, is deployed on a Kubernetes pod sitting right next to the sidecar. So you have, you have extremely efficient communication between the sidecars are representing the user code and the, and the user code itself. And this sidecar then manages things like, like, like for example, 
uh, pub sub. We have brokerless pub sub over gRPC that's extremely fast, or you can choose to use something like Kafka or GCP pub sub or AWS DNS. And, and then and this sidecar also manages the, all the distributed storage, I mean the, the event logging, these materialized views, and, and so on. And all these, all these, all the right hand side is completely generated for you in the optimal fashion based on your on your source code on the on the left hand side. So you have really good separation of responsibilities here, leaving the developer with only the minimum it needs to do to implement a full cloud native, super fast, you know, reactive, highly performance stack. So the key takeaways here is that I think events events first design helps you to build to reduce risk when modernizing applications. It allows you to move faster towards uh, what we all know, want, you know, a resilient and a scalable architecture. And 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 it really allows us to build highly autonomous services. You know, and autonomy means that we have a way to to balance certainty and uncertainty, you know, being able to contain uh you know certainty and 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 having really good patterns to deal with the uncertainty event logging as I, as I talked about allows you to avoid you know crud avoid orm mapping and really take control over over your system's history it allows you to time travel even we haven't talked about that but it's an interesting concept you be you, you you can go back and replay certain parts of your of your of your of your history and so on and it but more importantly allows you to balance strong and eventual consistency in a really good way i think so how do you implement that i think calyx is probably one the best platform to implement all these events first you know event logging event sourcing type of type type of system truly event driven microservices because it really gives you i mean really really low time to market while reducing the cost and it allows you to focus you as a developer to focus on only the three things that matter, I think, you know, the API, the data model, and the business logic, and delegate everything else. Delegate operations, you know, true zero ops with a within. You don't need an SRE team or, or on staff, you know, to, to run this stack because all that is on Lightman. And and you can ensure that you know by just writing this code, pushing it up to Kalix, you will run on a fully reactive, event driven, very high performance infra infrastructure stack. So, so so please check Kalix out. Go to kalix.io. Uh, and scan this QR code here, and and uh, you know, and uh, it will it will it will send you to a page where you can explore Calyx virtually, and then you just download it and try it locally yourself. You know, no strings attached, and uh, you know if you like it, and you if, and, you know, and and you and you built a a, a POC or 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 a demo or whatever, then you can just go to Calyx.io and upload it there, and, and we run it for you. We also have a Slack channel, you know, hashtag Calyx support. Uh, but go to Calyx.io and scan this QR code and, and we'll, we'll be there for you answering all questions. Thank you.